math formulas. That's all that it is. So you have to make sure you have the right battery for the right application. That's all that it is. Now, this obviously is a giant battery, okay? This is a two cell, 7,500 milliamp with a 90 C discharge, okay? This is a giant battery. Like, I mean, it's the same physical size as every other sort of basic hard, hard case, but that's a big battery. Is it two series or, or two parallel two series? Irrelevant. It's a 2P, but it doesn't matter at all. Okay. So this is physically the exact same size of battery. This is a three cell, 5,200 milliamp, and it has a 50 C normal rating, 100 C max, okay? So I'll tell you what that's all about. Same basic size, okay? Two tiny batteries, we love these at our shop. They fit in the trucks and they're great. And everybody <laughs> looks at these and goes, how can you possibly run your truck on a 1,300 milliamp battery? I'm gonna explain that, it's really easy. Okay, so basically, to make your car move, or your truck move, you have drag, right? It's like you're pushing this, and how much energy does this take to push, right? So if your truck rolls really easy, or you have an MO3R or whatever, a race car, it requires very little power to move it. There's not much drag. So that gives you something like this, right here. This is where you are on the drag scale, right here, okay? Uh, we took a amp meter and hooked it up to this battery, an actual like industrial amp meter, put it in line in the battery, ran it on a 17.5 brushless truck that weighs 13 pounds, a crawler, crawled the crap out of it, like loaded it, stood on it and gunned it and everything, and all we could pull out of it was 22 amps. Okay, 22 amps. I'm going to give you the math. We had 22 amps registered, right? Here's the formula at the bottom. It was a two cell, 7.4 volts. The total on that is, I think if I can find my formula, 162 watts. 163 if you round it up. Yeah. Okay. So we measured. We don't know how many watts it was taking, but we measured the amps and we got 22 amps. That's all the truck would draw. That's a brushless, very heavy, big, gigantic crawler in full stall. Tekin FXR, Tekin uh, brushless system. We stepped on it so it was full stall and gunned it. And doesn't matter what we did, all we got out of it was 22 amps. That's all it will take. The voltage input was 7.4, two cell battery, okay? That's 162 watts, that puts us right here. If you take a big fifth scale crawler, like one of those things, and electrify it, the wattage output on one of those, the wattage requirement is actually over here. 3,725 watts is the amount of power you have to have to make that move, that thing, if you electrify it. Yes, yeah, you know what it takes, right? Okay, boats. And helicopters draw the most horsepower required of anything. One horsepower is 600 watts, right here. One horsepower, pretty much 600 watts, okay? So, we're over here now. Okay, so the big buggies, six horsepower. Like six cell boats, you're talking like 2,700 watts, okay, this is like, Big boats with six cell requirement, uh, X max. You guys all know about tracks is X max, A cell, six cell. We're talking like huge wattage right here. Okay, this is 20 something, 2000 plus, 1500 plus for trucks. Why are boats and helicopters requiring more power? Does anybody have an idea? Why do they, re why do they require more power than a vehicle? Need, uh, more drag or with the propeller. Okay. There's always loaded. Always loaded. That's the difference. No the difference between boating and trucking is drag. Boats never let up the drag. Copters and planes never let up drag. A car requires motion to get it going and very little to keep it going. So that's why we only ended up with this on our truck. The peak output we could get on it was this. 
What does the what do you think one of these actually uses for its everyday just driving around and trailing? Well, that's long that most of the time. I don't think you can even see that. We're talking like six or eight watts, okay? So you go on a trail run with one of these six or eight watts. I don't care what power system you put in. Six or eight watts. Okay. So we're gonna do a bunch of formulas here, and I'm just gonna show you what, what the, what's going on with that. I'll write these out real quick. And then uh, I'll tell some I'll I'll get a volunteer to come and help me draw something. Okay. Here, this one is this battery is good. It's not puffed out. It's in pretty good shape. If you start drawing it to the end of its maximum wattage for any extended amount of time, and I mean like seconds, if you hold it at its maximum draw, you're going to start to join some of the gel dots together. It's a bad illustration, but you get the point. When the battery is old, this happens all by itself, and nobody tells you that. A lipo, the, the lipo, lithium polymer substrate in one of these batteries actually ages. It starts to crystallize by itself over time. So if you go to uh, if you go to buy batteries, buy batteries from a company who sells millions of batteries, yeah. so you get fresh ones. Don't ever settle for like the one with all the dust on it in the back shelf, because it's already probably half half crystallized inside. Don't buy it. And what what this is happening? Let's just say that the C rating is related to the amount of dots. Okay in your head. So let's say this battery has is a 90C, let's say it has 90 dots in it. If we start joining these together, how many dots do I have left? 45. 45 if it's half worn, less if it's less and less and less, right? So the older the battery is, or the more you work it close to its limit, the worse it'll get, and the worse it gets, the more the battery decays. It's this self-fulfilling cycle. So the other thing that you need to understand about these batteries is, thank you, sir. Thank you. thanks Steve, big help Steve. Great job, Steve. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Great dot placement. Thanks, man. Chris, Chris's were actually better. Nerd. <laughs> Brown noser. The way that lithium batteries are designed, these are specifically, they come pre-charged at 3.7, so if it's a 2 cell, 3.7 is the nominal voltage, the middle voltage, times 2 is 7.4. So that's where you get the voltage total for these. But when you charge them, you charge them to 4.2 per cell. When you discharge them, you have to stop at 3.3. If you discharge them below 3.3, this happens almost instantaneously. So almost all the time, batteries that actually puff and feel warm have actually been drawing current below this voltage. That's almost 99% of the cases. And when these actually have lipo fires in a car that's driving down the road and you're like, how could that happen? It wasn't even damaged or poked or anything, right? That's what happened. This, this starts to accelerate really fast, this decay accelerates really fast below 3.3 to the point where they can get so hot that they self-ignite. That's the reason you see light bulb fires. It's not from bad care or anything like that. The other thing that you can do to make these join together is actually stab it with a screwdriver. And you can short out a light bulb by stabbing it together, but all you're actually doing is making less dots and touching the plates together. That's all you're doing, you're shorting out the plates. It's a lot of work. I mean, if you, have anybody tried to wreck a light bulb battery? Have you ever tried that? I figured Wade. Yeah, I figured Wade. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody more? Um, and, right. and for those that don't think it happens, it happens. Chris and I, yeah. uh, Kate, we were on in an event in Pennsylvania. Uh, we came outside and we're like, what is that smell? Like, some smells. And we were literally in the parking lot at the hotel. The closer we got to the car, we realized that there was a haze all over the inside of the windows. Oh no! Uh, off, and uh, one of his trucks, uh, the battery went inside his car overnight. Overnight by itself. By itself. Yeah, unplugged. Yeah. And uh, we could have lost every vehicle, tiny truck and in the car, including the car. We Let me get this straight. And this is the guy that's teaching us about. Well, we, I think we. <laughs> we, we oh, that's we why he's the expert. Why? Oh, 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 but but you think you're you, you know it, yeah. you think they're invincible leading up to that one event and and oftentimes that one event is a very big event yeah uh, flame so, the whole thing and we learned our lessons.
We never saw the fire out of there. The car was full of smoke and it, we couldn't even get in it. It smells so bad. But the realities are... Yeah, it, that's toxic. That was a hard body Jeep that literally melted. Okay, so ABS melting is 270 degrees. So the, the literally the ABS the hard body literally melted around the battery casing. And when it was done working and we took the whole truck apart to see what was in there, the only thing left in there was tin foil plates. There was no plastic, there was no wire, there was nothing except metal plates. So, so I have a new respect for light bulbs. Make sure they're in the boxes, yep. in the metal containers. Yep. Like it's not when it's not if it's gonna happen, it's when is it gonna happen. The uh, pouches are, are they any good? Like the yeah, so light bulb what the bags? light bulb pouch actually does is it's it's designed, it's made out of a material that's incombustible. So it's not gonna keep your battery from burning, but it'll keep anything else from yeah, burning. You don't burn your house. Then. The smoke will come out of it and it'll contain all the heat, all the fire, all the problem, it'll contain it within the bag, and that's how you keep your house from burning down. Yeah, put them in a bag. <laughs> no, not a grocery, not a grocery. Okay. So, so what did you, before you get yeah, go ahead. too far, is ahead. there any advanced warning no. that a battery well, is, yes. is uh, other than, other the yeah. puffing? Yeah. I think. Just the puffing? Yeah. yeah. So is it true the puffing is like it's releasing some gas inside itself to kind of like show that the battery's going bad? Uh, there's multiple theories on that. Uh, no matter, it, it could have something. I don't know that I haven't taken them apart to find out, but. The light bulbs are not are, are not uh, sealed. So if the light bulb is holding gas in it, they're not sealed. So that's not the case. Light bulbs are inherently waterproof. Like you don't have to waterproof a light bulb. You can stick it right in the water and then bring it home and dry it off. And there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't change anything because they vent. They're made to vent. So one of the theories is that when this stuff is crystallizing in between the cells, it's actually changing shape. So instead of it laying flat. It's actually growing. It's like uh, it's like spray foam. That's the theory. So obviously, I've actually I've had puffed batteries and I've actually pierced the outer casing, squished them back down, and I'll oh. be with all the <laughs> Really? That's crazy. Yeah. No. That's, uh, you don't want to That's scary. Uh, what you might be doing is just like foam is compressed foam, right? You're compressing. Oh no, you actually you can't, you're, 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 you can't go from a Right. stable battery like that. You know, the fire. seal it again very carefully. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can if you overdrive. Yeah. What I'm saying is it's what sitting there like that, you know, whatever turns. Yeah. It, yeah. it looks like a pretty good shape battery. battery. Yeah. It's yeah. safe mm -hmm. to sit like that. Yeah. We're not going to... I was thinking, like, I leave them on the workbench down time. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good usually, but put them on my case. But, oh, yeah. So, the battery that was in the Jeep that melted uh, didn't show any signs of puffing. Uh, but it had been in there for probably four years, and we don't know when it was manufactured. Okay. So let me let me just suggest the battery was three or four years older than that. I'm just going to yep. guess. Yeah. So let's say that battery was six or seven years old. Yeah. Even though we were hardly drawing any power out of it, it was a scale truck, right? So the battery had a, a 80 amp nominal capacity. I was only using maybe 10 or 15 out of it. So I'm not drawing it enough to do this. But this was probably happening while I'm not looking. Just from age. Just from age, yep. right? So I expect the plates finally contacted each other in the truck just because of age. Just Part because of those. Yeah, and then, then look at because they really are a really high power thing. We had one blow up in the basement in a mini, in a micro car, remember that? Mm -hmm. It was a little tiny two cell, I think 350 milliamps or something. Yeah. And while it was driving around, it's just like, Whoa! Like, whoa, it like let out this. <laughs> I mean, that was all it had, right? The battery was only like the size of two thumbnails, but all it had was a big puff of smoke, and then we were just like, "Whoa, yeah. golly, is that ever?" Like, it just cleared the basement. It just stinks like yeah. Yeah. burnt electronics, you know. I think that's the camp car. Right? That, 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 <laughs> that little thing will keep you free. Yeah. Your okay, so I want to show you some interesting math here. This yeah. will be the last thing I've got. Um, <laughs> So let's just say we have this 7590C and it can put out 2400 watts, okay? And we're gonna to move to this battery right here. This one is a 5203 cell. This is a nice big battery, by the way. I'm, I, there's a little plug for Helios RC. Anyway, great batteries. Uh, let me write down the numbers on that because this is a really inter interesting thing to see. So this is a 5200 and it's a 50C nominal. That turns out to 260 amps. We're going to divide that by two just because we want to be safe light bulb users. 
that gives us 130 amps. Uh, it's a three cell battery. So if we take the three cell voltage instead of two and put that into the amp map, we end up with a battery that can actually put out 1,443 watts, okay? So what happens if we have a six cell truck now, like a big Yeti? If we put two of these together and create a six cell, what part of the formula changes? Anybody? Just the nominal voltage. Okay, but if the nominal voltage changes and the amp stays the same, then what happens to the wattage? increases. So let's say we put two of these in parallel, we get a six cell, now we have 2,800 watts available, right? So that's why we double up these batteries. That big Yeti comes, I need two batteries in it, and the reason I need two is because I gotta get some more wattage somehow. So you, you are joining the batteries in series, right, so to get wattage. Okay, I'll do one more. This one here, my favorite battery of all time. It's a three cell, 1500. This is a tiny battery, 45 to 90 C. That's what it's rated at. And that's a conservative rating. So I'm gonna go 1500 <coughs> times 90 C. That gives me 135 amps. I'm gonna divide that by two, which gives me 67.5 amps. Can you believe this thing is supposed to start a car? Like 67 and a half amps. Actually they do, but that's a different story. So it's three cell, and that's gonna give me 749 watts, okay? My last battery is my other favorite battery, which is a tiny little one, 1300. This one is a 45C, pretty small battery, 45C. And that gives me 58 amps. I'm gonna divide that by two, which puts me right down to 29 amps, but it's a three cell, giving me a total wattage of 324. Okay, if a scale truck at its maximum with a brushless power system can, can take 22 amps, 162 watts, this little tiny battery can still give me 324 watts, okay? So, this is actually a contender. You don't need this thing in a scale truck. You just don't. Now, here's something interesting. If this truck needs 162 watts, and we take this battery and leave it on the shelf for years and decay it so it's half decayed, okay? We're, we're at, the decay is actually taking out the C rating. So let's cut this battery down in half again. If we cut this in half, Guess what we get? 162 watts. This battery at half capacity can still run a scale truck with a brushless power system. So what does the milliamp hour mean? All that it means is the size of the gas tank. There's the, each of these things actually means something completely different. So milliamp hours, 7,500, that's a big gas tank. Okay, 1300, pretty tiny gas tank. We all know this from our cars, right? Cars, ATVs, whatever it is. If you have a 50 gallon tank, it goes far. If you have a 10 gallon tank, mm -mm. Okay, so you see the difference? So if somebody says, oh, you gotta have a 35C battery. 35C to what? That's just one part of the formula. You gotta know the rest of the math if you're gonna come up with a number that might suit the vehicle you're putting it in. We have, uh, Dana and I both fly, uh, giant scale aircraft that are electric, six cell. We run six cell 3,300 batteries, which uh, I think are something like 50 C. So 3,300, 3.3 times 50 is gonna give us 100 and whatever, 60 amps available. There's been very few times they come back warm because we're only putting out the power at the beginning for takeoff or whatever, and then once they're moving, they use very little power. If you have a boat, you need a lot of available wattage because the drag never changes on the boat, ever. If you're running fifth scale and it has a huge peak current, like the peak current can be braking or power, which is why a lot of guys with big, big ESC, big uh, trucks or big ESCs, big batteries, turn the brakes down. If you can, turn the brakes way down because the flash current on braking is actually worse than the pickup current on throttle. Yeah. 
you can create more damage and more fire and more electron more electron heat with braking than you can with acceleration. So punch control, same thing. If you have a fast buggy, fast car, turn the punch control down. You'll probably really not notice that much when you're driving, but it'll make a huge difference to the battery life because punch control is this right here. How much peak current it'll put out. ESCs that have uh, current limiting on them, the, the race car guys do that, right? You, have, you limit the current on them so that you can get your full speed on the trip straight away without having to limit the throttle and stuff like that. You can set ESC parameters for that. That's this. So, motors, you gotta have a motor that can handle the power you're gonna put in. The ESC is the size of the pipe that you're gonna feed out of the gas tank. And you gotta make sure that there's enough stuff in the tank to actually feed that pipe. Otherwise, you're gonna have heat problems. That's it. Buffing batteries, 99% uh, of the time happens because they're actually running below operating voltage. That's when most of this decay happens. If you have a voltage cutoff setting on your truck or your ESC, set it to like three and a half because the hit current is still going to dump just below that and then you want the batteries to shut off before you get into this danger zone where it starts to really cook stuff. <coughs> Questions? I know that's a lot of food for thought, but... Awesome. What's the expected life kind of a LiPo? <coughs> Thousands of cycles. No, not the cycles, the age. Um, I'm going to suggest that uh, if you have three or four years of semi-regular use on a battery, it's probably time to retire. Because after four or five years, you're starting to get enough crystallizing in the battery that it's, there's no real... Yeah, because I've got three well, of those 7500s, yeah. and one of them is just not holding the charge for very long when I put it in the slash. That's the and going so on. that's the suspect <laughs> one. It's not to take that one out of rotation. Yeah, it's, it's not puffed, but it's it's, it's obviously showing its age. Doing when the same thing stops, on my summit. Stops, Some of my summits are doing the, the same thing. Current. I got two batteries, charge them up full blast, and I barely get any run time off it. And also, that it lethal cuts off as soon as I hit the trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When, the, when the battery shows that it's lost capacity, you know it's done. Well, then it's going to be retired. <laughs> Anybody know how to dispose a battery properly? Light bulb? Salt water? <laughs> Total battery? Throw it in the swamp. The salt get water. Can, can, burn, get a tin can, a glass jar, or anything like that. Put a, fill it with water, put a little bit of table salt in it, and drop the battery in. Come back in a week, take it out over here. Yeah. The salt uh, produces the, some conductivity in the water. That's very controlled. How much salt? A little bit. You don't need much. Probably hard water is probably just about as good. I've seen some videos done, and you actually see the bubbles kind of act the connectors. Yeah, they plug the yeah, yeah. bubbles sometimes really kind of cool. Yeah. So your kids look like shorting it through the shorting it. That's it. You're, you're, you're slow shorting it, but you're also shorting it in a cooler. Yeah. Right. So there's no chance of this ever heating up, and the current in the water will be consistent for the entire life of the discharge. And once it's discharged, there's no risk of fire in the dumps. So nothing garbage. It's all recyclable material. Even if it's really? poke it with yeah. a screwdriver, it won't blow up. If it's yeah. dead, it's zero. If it's dead, dead, there's nothing left to react. No, no. Yeah, poking it is a reaction between the plates and the substrate. If the yeah. plates are dead, Once you let the oxygen voltage is dead. Here's a quick. Uh, Quick question about uh, storage and um, uh, battery gone bad with, with storage. So uh, some chargers they have a some chargers have a storage mode, and so it, like you drop your voltage but not not too low. Uh, you store it. It's winter, whatever. Um, you could come back and one of the cells just decided to drop below the other cells, and then your pack is. It, it, uh, so it, you pull that cell, your, your three cell pack becomes a two cell. Yeah. Pack. So that's that's kind of like a just a freak accident. That's like one cell it's decides. This. One cell decides to yeah. go bad and. If you have a if you have a bad cell in a battery, it's usually because it's overdrawn or it's crystallized. That's it. But but technically, it, you're supposed to be able to store a battery and not really have any trouble with it. Yeah. 
Can you draw it down? I think it's about 60 odd percent. 60 if the polymer is good, you run the magnet. You store them at 3.7, which is the nominal voltage for the cell. So there's no charge action, there's no discharge action. If it's sitting at its nominal manufactured voltage, it will last for years and years, years and you'll have very little decay. Now, is that the same for three cell or two cell? It doesn't matter because it's a per cell. Electric module you can get. It doesn't matter if it's related to your balance connector. It's got a couple of LEDs on it. And if, the cell, and if one cell drops too low, it'll set off a little screen and you go down and you can... Oh, the... Yes,